Okay, let's all take a look at this pumpkin smash scene. So, first thing, perhaps uh, unsurprisingly, is a pumpkin. And then here uh, I'm splitting the pumpkin into different layers, different components. So, first thing is the outer skin, like that. And we have a little bit of thickness to it. Here we have some flesh. This is a little bit hard to read right now, so I can show you how it looks, oops, sorry, how it looks inside. So um, yeah, this is not uh, that much biologically motivated, but I'm just trying to get a lot of those fiber uh, going from the outside skin toward the core of the pumpkin. Uh, this is going to uh, influence how things are being simulated and also how things are going to look at render time. So yeah, as you can see, just trying to get as much fiber as possible. And finally, the last part are the seeds. And I have modeled just a little uh, model of seed like this and uh, scattered it oriented toward the center, like so. Very simple stuff. Uh, and in terms of uh, how we use that in our simulation, here I'm doing a little trick where I'm actually not using directly the points that are coming out of the NPM source, as you will see. So I'm taking this flesh model, I'm just keeping the point, and here I'm fusing the overlapping points. So we go from 40 million to 9 million, and this is all driven by this particle separation on the NPM container. And then I'm uh, defining my uh, material here that I want to simulate, but then I'm just going to take those NPM attributes and transfer them over to those points, because this is the point I want to simulate, but this is where I'm configuring the material. So you don't really need to uh, use the points that are coming out of this node directly. So this is what I'm doing here, and we get our source here, good. I'm assigning a color. Here I'm going to prune the flesh that are overlapping with the seeds that we have here. Uh, on this side here we have our flesh, uh, not flesh but skin, everything gets merged together. Again I'm doing another step of uh, deleting the overlapping points, so now let's go from 14 million to 12 million, and finally I'm increasing the stiffness of everything, and I'm sure this was uh, derived from just iterating on the simulation trying to get something that looks cool and I needed everything to just be a little tighter and stiffer so I increased everything. In terms of the material themselves, um, we have, this is just like the rubber preset and those two, uh, the skin and the flesh are kind of similar and there's no like magical recipe here, I just like started from the snow preset and iterated on it until I got the look that I wanted. You can see I have like zero compression hardening, but on the skin I have some. So yeah, again, no magical recipe, it's just a matter of tweaking until you get the, the look that you're after in your simulation. Here we have our collider, so this is going to be our hammer that is going to smash through the pumpkin. So here we have it. Uh, this is being animated kind of in real time, this is how I like to work, so I'm just making sure that I have the the speed that I would expect the hammer to hit in real time, and then uh, this is where I apply the um, time scale of the simulation, so I'm gonna get my slow motion from this here. Okay, for the solver itself, I have this material condition reduced to 0.7, so just uh, ramp up the substeps a little more aggressively. I have my time scale here that is driving uh, many different things in this scene. All the points that are going too far away while well, hitting the walls of the domain are going to be deleted. And I think that's pretty much it. Everything else is at default. The output is just taking care of removing some attributes, and that's it. This is what we're, we are caching. And if we look, yeah, if we look at the frame like this one, this is what we get, looking good. And here uh, I'm starting the simulation at frame 32, so I'm adding this clamp to uh, first frame just to make sure that the we still have some data on frame one, when because uh, like nothing is going to be simulated until we reach frame 32, but we still want to see our pumpkin and the impact starts at frame 32. After that, we're pruning uh, this CD attribute and we are applying the time scale to our velocity. 
So <clears throat> if we are rendering this directly, we want the uh, velocity vector to represent how much the points are moving in space. And since this is a slow-mo shot, we need to multiply the velocity by this uh, multiplier here. Here we are just building our collider. So I'm just going to load one frame to show you how it looks. Okay, so this is our collider. And here in terms of uh, the settings, yeah, everything's at default. It's just a simple NPM surface at default. Nothing changed. Um, and here we are uh, setting up our uh, debris source. Again, we have our NPM debris on this side. We are removing the seeds because we don't want to uh, emit any secondaries from the seeds. And here we are kind of doing the opposite operation. So we are reapplying the scale up of the velocity vector because we are going to simulate in slow motion. So for things to move at the correct speed in a slow motion simulation, you need to have the uh, proper velocity vector that represents how things would be moving in real time. So just if I uh, show you, so this is what we were getting as input. And now we're dividing by the, this time step to recover our proper um, uh, velocity vector for the real time. Now, if I look at the output of this node, I think most things are all set. Yeah, this is pretty much the default on everything. I've just increased a tiny bit this uh, minimum speed to have uh, like slower points not being included. And I have reduced those two parameters to get just less point being generated uh, in the point to replicate. And I'm also just keeping 10% of the generated points from this node. And that's it. So now we can just see, if I go back to automatic uh, update, we can see the kind of points that we are using for our, our emission. And uh, oh, you can also see maybe another detail that is important. You can also see that this time scale uh, is grayed out because it's being imported from the uh, this branch here. So it knows that this is a slow-mo shot. So that's why you don't, like even if the, the vectors are really strong, when you do this here, oops, sorry, this, like spread point along velocity, it's not going to spread the point from here to all the way there. Like it's doing a smaller spread because it knows that this is a slow motion shot. If you didn't have that, uh, it would like spray the, spread the points a lot further forward. Okay, so this is good. Um, then in terms of secondary simulation, this is a very basic pop uh, solver. Here I'm computing the packing of the points, so that points that are densely packed are less uh, affected by this air resistance. And I'm handling the collisions here, but feel free to use like just a static object like that to do your collision. It's going to work perfectly fine as well. Okay. Here we have our secondary simulation. This is this is going to be just like water droplets, just some kind of spray to add this very high uh, frequency level of details. Again, I'm uh, multiplying by the time scale, so we have smaller velocity vectors, so this is ready to render. And finally, I'm just keeping 10% of the points, like so. So this is what we're going to use to render our secondaries. And the last bit of the setup is meshing our pumpkin. And I don't know if, you, if you've if you watched the uh, first NPM masterclass, you might remember that uh, this used to be like very involved, but now most of the technology is just like embedded into those uh, post simulation nodes. So it makes those uh, uh, node tree very, very compact. And I think it's, uh, it's really uh, nice for the users. I mean, I hope it is. <laughs> you can let me know. Um, and so yeah, if we pick a more interesting frame like this. Okay, good. So we're splitting uh, the pumpkin by components. And here we have this skin mesh. Uh, and there's a couple of things that is happening here. So first thing, I'm computing the depth because at render time, I'm going to vary the color of, um, of this surface using the depth of the skin. So I want like one color from the interior and one color for, for the outside. And I want to smoothly transition between those two colors. That's why I'm computing the depth here. And uh, I'm also uh, piping this rest model into the third input to transfer the UVs. So this is why 
Okay, so I'm just going to cook this frame to show you. So here you can see the UVs are properly transferred. And in terms of the parameter that we're using on this uh, polygon mesh, we are transferring this depth attribute for the, from the NPM particles, we're transferring the UVs from this rest model. And in terms of surface parameters, we are not doing any dilation. Uh, so this could be unchecked. Uh, we are doing some smoothing, some erosion. And uh, we are also using this mask smooth and we can visualize what is being protected from this smoothing. So if I check the mask for the JP attribute, so everything that is uh, tearing or stretching, all of this uh, in blue is being protected. So this is not going to, uh, add, uh, to receive any smoothing from this part here. And we also have a mask with curvature. So again, everything that is in blue like that is going to be excluded from the smoothing. This is exactly what we want. We just want those big uh, areas to be smoothed. In terms of the flesh, I don't think we're doing anything fancy here. Um, let me check the NPM surface when we're done loading this. Okay, so this is cool. Uh, we have our like fiber look uh, for our flesh. So this is exactly what we want. It's gonna look good for a uh, render. And then if we look at the NPM surface, we have increased the additivity by a factor of 10. So we're trying to get as little uh, amount of polygon as possible because I think this is already yeah, like 28 million polygons. So we try to reduce this so it fits on a GPU memory if you use XPU. And here, just very simple uh, VDB from particles with a couple of filters, nothing special. In terms of the seeds, we are using this NPM deform pieces in a special way, so not uh, in uh, conjunction with the NPM post structure. We are directly using our seeds, just making sure that we have a name assigned to each of them. And then we can simply use this NPM deform pieces to move them in space. So then when we toggle, so this is our seed points, our NPM points simulated, and these are our models with UVs and all that you might need for rendering. Well, I don't think that these have UVs, but all of those look dev attributes would be uh, already uh, um, assigned to this geometry, which is what we want. Cool, and then we're just baking that down to a polysoup, and this is ready for render.